Just a few minutes. Uh, in John chapter 13, uh, on the title that you love one another, from the title that you love one another. In John 13, and you know I spent a lot of time in the book of John chapter 13, it has so much in God's word which is full of everything to offer in, in so many different areas. So I spent a lot of time in John chapter 13. And for this particular lesson, I, I, something that captured, caught my attention in John chapter 13 was the matter part of this particular uh, chapter. And begin at uh, verse uh, 34, Jesus said to them, uh, let's, let's back up to verse 32. He says, if God be glorified in him, God shall also glorify him in himself and shall straightway glorify him. He says in verse 33, little children, yet a little while I am with you. He said, you shall seek me and uh, as I said unto the Jews, where I go, you cannot come. So now I say to you, he says, because where I go, you cannot come. I know there's going to be some overwhelming concern. Uh, there's going to be times of, uh, uh, it's going to be a testing time. It's going to be a, 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 a difficult time. So he says to them, uh, I say to you in, in John 13, 34, he says, a new commandment I give unto you, that you love one another, as I have loved you, that you also love one another. Notice he says, that you love one another as I have loved you, that you also love one another. Twice in this text he says, you love one another. He said, I don't want you to forget this. This is very important. It's going to be uh, important. It's going to be significant that you hold on to these words, especially with the events that are coming to you. It's going to be important that you love one another because it's going to get tough. It's going to be trying. You're going to be tested. Even by one another, it's important that you love one another. And he says in verse 35, and by this, by what? That you love one another as I have loved you. By this, by what? As you that you love one another as I have loved you. By this, <coughs> he says that all men know that you are my disciples. If you what? He says again here, have love one to another. What's your sign? Never being one to not have anything to say. Simon said unto him, Lord, whether thou goest, Jesus answered him, Whether I go, thou canst not follow me now, but thou shalt follow me afterwards. Here's Peter. Say unto him, Lord, why cannot I follow thee now? I think that's a legitimate amen, son. Talking about leaving, and I want to know, amen. And then Peter goes on to say, To this extent, I'm willing to follow you. I will lay down my life for your sake. Jesus answered him and had to bring him back in a little bit. Will thou lay down thy life for my sake? And at the time, I believe Peter meant it when he said it, amen. Verily, I truly, truly, Jesus said, yeah, I say unto thee, this is Jesus, the cock shall not crow till thou hast denied me thrice. <clears throat> what I want us to look at this morning in that text are those words that you love one another. And before you can say it, let me say it for you. Oh, here's another sign about love. Every sermon I preach is about love. Amen. For God so loved the world. If you take that out of there, then I'm just up here you know, wasting your time. Amen. Amen. And we can just go ahead and do something else. So every sermon I preach is about the love of God. Because it took the love of God for him to send his son, amen, to die. It took the love of God for his son to stay on that cross. So every sermon I preach is 
going to be about love. But I want you to get this this morning, that you love one another. Turbulent times where indeed about to uh, come upon the disciples of Christ. Jesus, knowing that God is love, Jesus knows the worth of the value of love. Somebody say, what's love got to do with it? Love got everything to do with it. Amen. Love will get you through some things when you ain't, when you ain't, got, ain't got money to put food on your table. Love will get you through, amen. amen. Because the love of someone knowing that you are in dire straits and need a little help, amen. Love got everything to do with it. Amen. So here's Jesus, and he's talking about the importance of love. He knew the importance of love, so he emphasized and watch what he's doing here. He emphasized that it was not just about love anymore, but he says there's a commandment now attached to this. Now here's the thing about a commandment. You can do or you can not do. But when the one who makes the command says to do, and you fail to do, then now you're out. Amen? You have rejected what the one who is said to do, what they have said to do. Amen? So he says here, this is a commandment that they should love one another to a greater degree than they could ever think about. That's right. Say, that's why I love you. Okay. To what degree? To what degree? The degree to which Jesus loved us while we were yet sinners. Christ died for us. So he says, this is the degree that I want you to love one another to the degree that I love you. What I'm about to do, what I'm willing to do, I want you to love one another to that same level, to that same degree. Nothing attached to it, not because, not if and when, but in spite of. And y'all hold on to that. That you love one another. I want you to hold on to that because we're getting ready to jump away from that. But everything I'm talking about is based upon that or contingent upon that. He wants them to love to a greater degree than they could ever think possible. To what degree? To the degree that he loved them. He even stated that it was a new commandment, which implies that it was one that had not been previously given. Amen. Now help me to see somewhere where God says, I command you to love one another. If I'm to find it, please show it, but I don't see it. But I was thinking about this, and I said, you know what? He said this is a new commandment. Right. New means something that has not previous to what? This is not a, 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 another version of an old. He said this is new. And I know you're thinking Deuteronomy 5, and Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse 5, under the old law, the people of God were told in Deuteronomy 6 and 5, it says, And thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thine heart, with all thy soul, with all thy might. <coughs> but Jesus says that you love one another as I have loved you. Deuteronomy, uh, Moses says Deuteronomy, here, that thou shalt love the Lord thy God. In Matthew 19, 19, Jesus says, Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. This is not the same as loving one another as I have loved you. Because some of us, especially when we conduct ourselves sometimes, you have to wonder if we even love ourselves. Amen. And if I can't trust you to love yourself, I probably can't trust you to love me. Because at some point, self-preservation, amen, to say that I have a soul, and if I lose that soul, that's it. And the only way I can be what Jesus is is to obey the Lord, but I choose not to obey the Lord. Amen. So this is a new command. That you love one another as I have loved you, that you love one another. Amen. Everybody got that? Everybody thinking that? Love one another as I have loved you. Is that clear in everybody's mind? 
Because I, I wanted to be clear because now I'm getting ready to do a whole bait and switch on it. <laughs> Y'all know what a bait and switch is? You see that, that commercial on TV? Be the first 200 in, hey amen, to get a 39 with a 50 inch flat screen TV for 25 hours. <laughs> and you get up early to go get in that line, they said, well, it was 500 people here before you, so you missed out. But we do got a, a 50 inch here for $2,500. And we're going to set up on a nice payment plan, 1995 a month. For how many months? 360 months. If you pay for that job, you pay for a house. Let's go pay the switch. So if you allow me, let me throw a little baby switch on you now. I want you to be, I want you to have in your mind that we ought to love one another, that we, that we love one another as Christ has loved us. Because now I'm going to talk to you about something else, but it's going to require that we love one another as Christ has loved us. Otherwise, you're not going to get this other part, amen? So until you can understand that we ought to love one another as Christ has loved us, you're not going to be able to, 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 to attach this other part to you. You're not going to be able to, to deal with this other part. And, and, and we have problems with this other part, and that's what I'm talking about. Otherwise, I'm going to talk about something else. But what I want to talk to you about, now that I, I, I done your baby switched on you, baby switched on you. It takes us loving one another as Christ has loved us in order for us to stay united as one. Amen. In order for us to stay united as one, we have got to be able to love one another as Christ has loved us. Amen. Now what I want to deal with this morning, and for a few minutes here, and also I want to hear this evening, so I want you to be back here this evening, amen, but this is important. If the Lord wills, be back this evening, amen. amen. There's a process for us to work out our disagreements and issues that we have with one another. Amen. That's a process. And you've heard me talk about this before, but you've never had heard me predicate this upon loving one another as Christ has loved us. I said, well, maybe I missed something. Because I talked about the process before, but it still seems like the process is not, it's not, it's not believable. We, we don't trust it, or whatever the case may be. Or maybe it's just easier to go around the process. So I wanted to talk about this process. And in Romans chapter 12, verse 16, Romans chapter 12, verse 16, it says here, and this is not from the King James Version, but this version here, this translation here says, uh, live in harmony with one another, if possible, so far as it depends on you, live peacefully with all men. And though King James says, with as much as life in you, or something like that, right? Live peacefully with all men. Yep. But this translation, I like the way it says it. It says, live in harmony with one another, if possible, so far as it depends on you, live peaceably with all. So a lot of this living peaceably depends on me. It depends on you. But all I have control of is the part that depends on me. Amen. And if I do what I'm supposed to do according to God's word, then I am making an effort to live peacefully. I am making an effort to love you as Christ has loved us. All of that is involved. The rest is on the other party. Amen. And it's important that we know this. We ought to live peacefully with all men. And I know everybody in here sets out with the intent every day, with every encounter of every individual, that you will enter and leave that account in a state of peace. Amen. But can I tell you something? It's not possible. <laughs> it don't always happen that way. Amen. Amen. There are some folks, they are walking around with not just chips, but chips and dip on their shoulder. Amen. Amen. 
They are looking for something or somebody to vent on. In many cases, you have been vented on, and you're like, what did I do? And truly, the situation is, you, and you didn't, what did I do? Because you haven't done anything. Right. So now, how do I deal with this? Well, with as much as I can do, sometimes they said to just before I keep your mouth shut, I'll see you at a better time. Amen? Amen. Now, another time, at a better time. Get them out to them to work on whatever it is they're working on. Especially when you ain't got nothing to do with you. So we ought to live peaceful with all men. But there's a process of doing this. Jesus teaches us what to do when we offend one another. If you become aware, and this is what I'm talking about, that's why I told you I'm going to obey the switch. I want you to think about the importance of loving one another as Christ has loved us. Because if you don't get that, then this ain't going to make no difference to you. Oh, this is going to require you to love, to have a deep level of love to the extent that you are following this new commandment in order for you to be able to go through this other process and work with well. Amen? But some people make it difficult to try to amend or fix a problem. Some people only want problems fixed. Because they are so, they, they, that's, that's what they thrive, it seems like. And I'm not talking about nobody here. I'm not talking about anybody here. I'm not talking about anybody here. Some people don't want problems fixed. Some people thrive and wait for drunk. They really do. But they ain't here, so we're going to talk about it. If you become aware that you have offended someone, you should go to a great mess to seek their forgiveness and reconciliation. That's important. And love will allow you to do just that. Love will take down everything out of the way and pull everything else back and allow you to make that effort to seek forgiveness and reconciliation. In Matthew chapter 5, verse 23, Matthew chapter 5, verse 23, it says, and this is the same uh, English standard version, it says, so if you are offering your gift at the altar, and there remember that your brother has something against you, leave your gift there before the altar and go. First be reconciled to your brother, and then come and offer your gift. If you know someone has a legitimate concern against you, or to legitimate all the issues, some stuff is frivolous now. Let's not be naive. Some things are frivolous. But if you know somebody has a genuine concern, or a, a genuine complaint, or a genuine fault against you, go to that person. And I believe this is predicated upon them already letting you know that they have that against you. Because well, you don't know sometimes that you're even offending somebody. But if somebody lets you know that you're offending them, and you're like, whatever, okay, you know them. And you choose to just walk away from that. When you understand that somebody has it all against you, you've been made, you've been, you've been made aware of it, go to that person. Because if you don't go to that person and get that right, you forget about coming to God. And expect for him to, well, okay, yeah, I know that you offended that person, you've done this, that, they'll say something to you, and you don't just say it, kind of wave them off. You just wave them off, amen? Wave them off. And now you are in front of God. My old heavenly father. Right? Right. What Jesus says makes so much sense. And it works. Even in when the people don't do what they're supposed to do or the response that they should give, it works because you've still done what you're supposed to do. Amen? Amen. So you go to that person and you seek forgiveness and reconciliation. We understand that. But it's going to take love. If someone offends or sins against us, the first line of defense 
But when someone sins or offends against us, and, and I know you're going to say, oh, that's not an option. That ain't even an option. First line of defense, when someone sins or offends against us,
somebody that, that we're, we're willing to listen to his counsel, amen? Because we study, most of the New Testament studies is, is things that's written by Paul, so, so we, we trust his counsel, right? The Holy Spirit guided him to write things, so we trust his counsel. We listen to Paul. And we say, well, I listen to Paul when he says, uh, the husband is the head of the wife, and the people's Christ is the head of the church. He has to say goodbye. If I listen to Paul when he says that, well, I listen, if I listen to Paul when he says, I can do all things through Christ Jesus who spent me. If I listen to Paul when he says, uh, what should separate me from the love of Christ? If I listen to Paul when he says, there's no condemnation in Christ Jesus. If I listen to Paul when he says, what about me read, you may understand my knowledge. When I listen to Paul for all those things, then when Paul talks about, uh, uh, gives an example of how to go to somebody, why would I not listen to Paul? Watch this as I close. In Matthew 18 through 15, Matthew 18 through 15, oh, Matthew chapter 18, by 18 through 15. Matthew chapter 18, uh, verse, what I for, verse 15? Matthew 18, 15. He says here, uh, moreover, if thy brother shall trespass against thee. Now that's when somebody do something against you, amen. That's not you doing it against them, that's them against you. Go and tell him his fault between what you and him alone. <coughs> if he shall hear thee, thou hast gained thy brother. But if he would not hear thee, and this is Jesus talking now, then take thee one or two more, that in the mouth of two or three witnesses every word may be established. It's Jesus talking now. Now, if he should neglect to hear them, uh, tell it to the church. But if he neglected the church, let him be unto me as a heathen man and as a tax collector. That's Jesus, the process we are to follow. We believe what Jesus says, right? I believe that Paul believed what Jesus said. I know Paul believed what Jesus says. Because in Galatians chapter 2, if you return over there as I close here, in Galatians chapter 2, I want you to see what Paul Amen. I want you to see how Paul dealt with a situation that came up. And we believe Paul when he says all these other things. Then why would we not believe Paul in this example of what he did when he believed that someone had done wrong? In Galatians chapter 2. <laughs> Beginning at verse number one, it says, In 14 years after I went up again to Jerusalem, this Paul talked with Barnabas and took Titus with me also. And I went up by revelation and communicated unto them that gospel which I preached among the Gentiles, but prior to them which were of reputation, lest by any means I should run, I had run in vain. But neither Titus, who was with me, being a Greek, was prepared to be circumcised, and then because of false brethren, other words, fall in, who came in privily to spy out our liberty which we have in Christ Jesus that they might bring us into bondage. To whom we gave place by suggestion, no, not for an hour, that the truth of the gospel might continue with you. But of these who seem to be somewhat, whatsoever they were, it make no matter to me. God accept no man's person, Paul says. But they who seem to be somewhat in conference had nothing to me. But contrarywise, when they saw that the gospel of the uncircumcision was committed unto me, as the gospel of the circumcision was unto Peter, Peter comes into play with this. For he that brought effectually in Peter to the apostleship of the circumcision, the same was mighty in me toward the Gentiles. And when James, Cephas, and John, who seemed to be pillars, perceived the grace that was given unto me, they gave to me and Barnabas the right hand of fellowship, and we should go unto the heathen, and they unto the circumcision. Only they would that we should remember the poor the same which I also was forward to do. And notice, something happened along the way. And Paul had an, an issue with it. In particular, Paul had an issue with Peter. That's right. hmm. Paul had an issue with Peter. And I want you to see how Paul handled this issue with Peter. Who was Paul's issue with? It was with Peter. It wasn't with Titus. It wasn't with Mark. It wasn't with Barnabas. It was with Peter. And Paul, this is how he handled the situation with Peter. What are you saying, Brother Bishop? When I have a situation with X, Y, Z, I need to go to X, Y, or Z. I don't go to X with the problem I have with Z. I don't go to Y with the problem I have with X. That's 
not how we do it. Because now we're simply making the problem get worse. Watch this. So you how Paul handled this thing. In verse 11, it says, But when Peter was come to Antioch, I would stir him behind his back. I know ain't nobody should have said that. He said, I would stir him to his face. Because he was to be blamed. I had a problem with Peter. So I went to Liam. I went to Graham. Because I had the problem with Dwayne. I walked past Brother Jones and go to Geraldine because I have a problem with Brother Jones. Paul went to Peter. And he says, I restored him to the face because he was to be blamed. For before the certain came from James, he did eat with the Gentiles, but when they were come, he withdrew and separated himself, fearing them which were of the circumcision. Paul Peter had been fellowshipping with these Gentile Christians, those that they would refer to as uncircumcised at a certain point. He was fellowshipping with them, but then when certain other people came around, Peter started to withdraw away from them. That was wrong. That was right. Mm -hmm. But Paul went to the source. He went to Peter. And let me show you this. He says, and the other Jews, verse 13, because what Peter was doing was causing others to act likewise. Peter was disrupting the church. Y'all talking about Peter. The one who stood and preached the first gospel sermon. The one who was one of the ones in Jesus' innermost circle was causing problems in the church. But Paul went to him. He didn't go talk to Barnabas and, and Silas and anybody else. He went to Peter. I'm simply saying that when we have an issue with somebody, according to God's word, we go to the person. Man. And they even make, they make uh, provisions, but when that person don't act the way they should act based on the scripture. The provisions are already there. But we have to go to them. And when we love as when we love one another as Christ has loved us, we will do just what he says. Because he says, if you love me, keep my commandments. Which one? All of them. And he says, oh, by the way, here's a new one. That you love one another as I have loved you. And I'm telling you, if the people don't conduct themselves away, they're still going to work out because you'll follow them. It's going to work out. It's going to work out. It's going to do exactly what God expects it to do. And it has provisions to every degree. He says, in verse 14, I'm closing him. But when I saw that they walked not the right according to the truth of the gospel, I said to Peter before them all, If thou being a Jew lives after the manner of Gentiles and not as do the Jews, why compellest thou the Gentiles to live as do? The Jews. He said, Peter, you come on, man. You try to get these Gentiles, and, and you're okay with them until certain other Jews come along, and then you try to get these, you want, you want to get away from them. You don't have nothing to do with them. Hmm. Then you, along with these other guys who are wrong, telling them they got to go and be circumcised under the law of Moses. He said, you can't do that. That's not right. But the point being, brothers and sisters, is that the process is that we go to. And I believe that this worked out. Man. Because I see no other encounter right. between Paul and Peter where this was a problem, where this was subject worth mentioning. So I believe that Peter understood and did what he was supposed to do. And said, Paul, you're right. And I believe that Peter, being another man, would have went to those people that he had moved away from and said, brothers, I apologize. Because we have no more mention about what happened between Paul and Peter concerning this situation there. And when we do what we're supposed to do, and the other party do what they're supposed to do, 
there's no more mention of it. Amen? Amen. <laughs> when it's over and done, it's over and done. Amen? Amen. Amen. We don't keep dredging it up. You don't have Paul walk around the time. Man, yeah, y'all go back and tell me, you know, y'all go back and tell me, yeah, yeah. Shut him down. <laughs> oh, oh. Oh, that's all in junk.
see that? That's the key right there. If we love one another as Christ has loved us, nobody will ever know whether they or not have a problem. None of us say we have a problem. It's all good. Amen? Amen. I had a problem with many people in the church. And I told them, and nothing else to say about it. I had people come to me with a problem with me. Nothing else to say about it. But it takes this, and all of this involves growth and maturity. Let me drop that in there too. Growth and maturity. Amen? We can get there. We can get there. Love one another as Christ has loved us. And we can deal with anything that comes our way. I got eight more pages, y'all, but I know it's that. I'm not going to act. But I got more. Because I believe this is beneficial. I believe this will help us in relationship. This will help you in the church house. And that's what Jesus is addressing this issue. This will help you on your job. This will help you in your home. Amen. Because we can't be right with each other here. I ain't been right with them either. Oh, that's all I can call either. <laughs> I'll be right with the folks outside now. I'll be right with them. I ain't gonna get along with them. We can't get along with one another. And we all say we plan on going in the same direction. All of us plan on going to a place called Star with an H. AG? Everybody still with me? Yeah. What about putting an L up there? What's that rap like, baby? You better put an L on there. We need our common ground to start with. We all believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. We're trying to go to heaven. We have to love one another as he has loved us. He's given us an example. Love one another as I love you. And then when these things come up, we are ready to deal with them. We know how to deal with them. This will help somebody. This will help somebody. Because somebody is at this moment. In a situation now where you say, do I go to them? I'll go ahead let it go. And if you go to them, go to them. Go to them. And if you are the recipient of them coming to you, humble yourself. Humble yourself, because you have a part in this as well. If you are the offender or the offendee, you have a part in this process. And as a child of God, we need to know how to conduct ourselves. Otherwise, it's going to be a big old mess. And churches get torn apart, families get torn apart because of something that was so small, so trivial to begin with. But it wasn't handled the right way. Let's handle things the godly way. That's the only way. Man, man. The godly way. If you're this one, I don't want to have a lot of people lining up now to close. Well, this way I got this against you. <laughs> Amen. Can you bring it to me in private, please? I'm about to hold up some Don't be surprised. Let's hold the whole church up. Oh. <laughs> Amen. I know we love one another. We don't always get along. We still love one another. Because we're going to go to heaven. You know we might go to those planes and each other. And we might be willing to forgive. Because one of the greatest attributes of Jesus can't match his love. Hmm. I believe one of his greatest attributes is his willingness to forgive. Because man, look at what he went through. Pain on that cross, which tells us the story about the death, the burial, and the resurrection. Pain on that cross, in the very process of, in the very act of, looking now saying, Father, forgive them. Watch me walk away from the church. Rise, walk away from the light, and add to the church. 
Christ, his body, his body, his wife, he's coming back for her. And there's a place for her, all those who love him. Do you just want to love a child of God? You may have gospel now. Do you just want to be a child of God? You fall by the wayside. Maybe this is the lesson you've been needing because you've been on this very issue. Maybe you need to take this time to ask for prayer so that you can be strengthened to go to that person. Or that you can be strengthened to receive that person that has an heart issue. That you're ready to give it another shot. Knowing that you have the love that you have for them. If you're this morning, you desire prayer, you desire to be baptized, make that noise as we stand and sing the song to the Right? Yeah, I'm a little bit of a